More protests loom in Venezuela as opposition disputes election results. Okay, so this is a big, complicated, difficult story. Um, I looked at a lot of different sources, a lot of different videos. Um, clearly, you've got the State Department and other Western powers that have wanted to overthrow the Maduro and before that, the Chavez government for over 20 years. Um, but uh, at the same time, uh, you do genuinely have these protests going on in the street. Is that astroturfed? Is it legitimate? Is it a majority? Is it a minority? We're, we're not on the ground of Venezuela. We're not there to know. Uh, we'll cover it as best we can based on the available information. I used I used Al Jazeera because it's probably the least biased mainstream source I could find on mm -hmm. this, but even they are rather skeptical of the election results. You want to say something, Kent? Yeah, so I actually had on my show and it'll be premiering later, pasta, a little bit later yeah, today. Right. And, yeah, Pasta yeah. Uh, joined us. He he tried to get inside Venezuela and there's been this whole process of holding back certain members of the press and independent media from, from going there. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But from what he was able to ascertain, and that is, you know, a lot of people turned out to vote. And yes, there are protests happening there, uh, but it's quite clear that there was an engineered attempt in which to once again sow chaos in a South American country, which is something we are all too familiar sure. with. Ne never ask the CIA its uh, relations with the cartel. I mean, this is this is this is something that we have seen play out. So, um, yes, there are protests happening, but who is funding it? Who is raising it right, right now? Because right. they're upset with the election results. Right, but but you also do legitimately have a faction, and th this is something that's rarely discussed. How the Chavez Maduro faction represents there. There's a certain amount of colorism in Venezuela. They represent a darker skinned, lower class Venezuelan coming to power, whereas the the Guaidos represent this more light skinned, upper class uh, Venezuelan. Um, but hey, man. Those white upper class Venezuelans may be the ones out protesting. Like mm -hmm. it, it, there, there is a sector of the society clearly that wants them out of power. The question is, um, how organic is that, and how much power, how much support do they really have in Venezuelan society? Just look um, for the person owning briefcase with a lot of money in it, with a lot of cash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Atypical. More, uh, let me see. Is that the beginning of that? Yeah. Uh, more protests are expected in Venezuela as opposition leaders are disputing the results of a weekend election that saw President Nicolas Maduro secure another term in power. Opposition leader Maria Carino Machado called for families to turn out on Tuesday for popular assemblies across the South American nation. Machado told reporters a day earlier that a review of available voting records from Sunday's presidential contest showed that opposition candidate Edmundo Gonzalez had achieved a, quote, categorically categorical and mathematically irreversible victory over Maduro. There are millions of citizens in Venezuela who want to see that their vote counts. She also posted on social media. But Venezuela's National Electoral Council on Monday formally confirmed that Maduro had been reelected by a majority of Venezuelans to another six-year term as president for the period 2025 to 2031. The announcement fueled widespread anger and thousands of Venezuelans took to the streets of several neighborhoods in the capital Caracas and elsewhere to voice their opposition to Maduro and his government. Thousands chanted, freedom, freedom, and this government is going to fall during the demonstrations on Monday, which were met with tear gas and rubber bullets fired by police. A local monitoring group, the Venezuelan Conflict Observatory, said it had registered 187 protests in 20 states by Monday evening with, quote, numerous acts of repression and violence, unquote, carried out by paramilitary groups and security forces. Four people also have been reported killed in the protests, according to nonprofit groups. 
the National Hospital Survey, a network that monitors crises in Venezuelan hospitals, said two people were killed in the northern state of Aragua and another was killed in Caracas. It said 44 people had been injured. The Foro Penal nonprofit group also reported one dead in the northwestern state of Yaraquay. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. Venezuela opposition Va- party Voluntad Popular said in a social media post on Tuesday that its national coordinator, Freddy Superlano, had been detained. Maduro has dismissed international criticism and doubts about the results of Sunday's voting, saying without any evidence that Venezuela was the target of an attempted coup d'etat of a fascist and counter-revolutionary nature. We'll litigate whether there's evidence a little later. Right. Uh, four people also have been reported killed in the protests. Oh, hang on. Uh, his government has also called the protesters violent agitators. Quote, we've seen this movie before, Maduro said from the presidential palace, pledging that security forces would keep the peace. We have been following all the acts of violence promoted by the extreme right, said the Venezuelan leader, who first came to power in 2013 after the death of his mentor and predecessor, Hugo Chavez. Maduro's campaign manager, Jorge Rodriguez, also called for, quote, large marches starting this Tuesday to celebrate the victory. Yet the results have spurred divided reactions from foreign governments, with the United States, EU, and several Latin American countries calling for a transparent process, while Venezuela's allies, including China, Russia, and Cuba, congratulated Maduro. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said on Tuesday that the Venezuelan opposition must accept defeat and warned against external interference. The Election Observation Department of the Washington-based Organization of American States said on Tuesday morning that it cannot recognize the results. The OAS is set to hold an extraordinary meeting to discuss the election on Wednesday. The report released by the group stated that the events of election night confirmed a, quote, coordinated strategy which has been unfolding over the last few months to undermine the integrity of the electoral process, unquote. That followed a decision by Peru to recall its ambassador to Venezuela and Panama saying it was suspending relations with the country over the disputed vote. Caracas has hit back at the criticism, saying it was withdrawing diplomatic staff from Argentina, Chile, Costa Rica, Panama, Peru, the Dominican Republic, and Uruguay. It also suspended flights to and from Panama and the Dominican Republic. The ongoing political unrest has raised concerns about potential repression of peaceful protests, as well as a new wave of migration from Venezuela. The country has experienced an economic collapse that pushed millions of people to leave in recent years. So, yeah, um, you know, there there is unrest. The question is how widespread it is. Um, And we will get a little bit into reason to doubt some of what they're saying about the validity of the election in the Ben Norton article. Um, And then we'll take a look at some of the lovely things that our State Department has said about cooing Venezuela over the years and Maduro's response. All right. So this is from Ben Norton. U.S. government linked firm is source of exit polling claiming Venezuelan opposition won election. So this is one of the main things that I've seen in all the articles I looked at that the opposition is claiming that they won 70 to 30 based on exit polls. So this is uh, what. Uh, Ben Norton's reporting uh, claims Venezuelan's opposition has claimed that it won the July 28th election, accusing President Nicolas Maduro of fraud. The supposed evidence that Venezuelan opposition leaders and their allies have cited to justify this claim is an exit poll produced by a firm that is closely linked to the U.S. government and does work for U.S. State Department state propaganda outlets that were founded by the CIA. A New Jersey-based company called Edison Research published an exit poll on the day of the election projecting that right-wing candidate Edmundo Gonzalez Urrutia 
would win with 65% of the vote compared to just 31% for Maduro. This poll was cited by Venezuela's far-right U.S.-backed opposition leader, Leopoldo Lopez, as well as Western media outlets like the Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, and Reuters. Many polling firms inside Venezuela are run by opposition figures and are notorious for their political bias. The most respectable independent firm in the country is the pollster Hinterlaces, which estimated in its exit poll that Maduro got 54.6% of the vote compared to 42.8% for Gonzalez. Venezuela's National Electoral Council ultimately reported that Maduro won the election with 51.2% of the vote, whereas Gonzalez received 442 and eight other opposition candidates got 4.6% combined. These results were close to what Hinterlaces projected, but very far off from what Edison Research claimed. The U.S. State Department, which has backed numerous coup attempts in Venezuela, refused to recognize Maduro's victory. Secretary of State Antony Blinken called the results into question. We're going to take a look at that, too. On the other hand, independent electoral observers said the vote was free and fair. Monitors from the U.S. National Lawyers Guild wrote that their delegation in Venezuela, quote, observed a transparent, fair voting process with scrupulous attention to legitimacy, access to the polls and pluralism. They strongly condemned the opposition's, quote, attacks on the electoral system, as well as the role of the U.S. in undermining the democratic process, unquote. Although Edison Research's exit poll has been widely cited by the U.S. media to cast doubt upon Venezuela's electoral results, it is by no means an impartial observer. In fact, Edison's top clients include CIA-linked U.S. government propaganda outlets, Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, and the Middle East Broadcasting Networks, all of which are operated by the U.S. Agency for Global Media, a Washington-based organ that is used to spread disinformation against U.S. adversaries. Um, So there you go. Um, That's Ben Norton's reporting on the poll, which seems to be the main thing that all these media outlets are basing their claim on. Um, The only word of caution I, I would say is we've sanctioned this country for almost two decades, and I'm sure there is economic desperation in large parts of the country. And I'm sure there are a lot of people in the country who would want to vote for an opposition candidate in order to get the sanctions lifted. So I I, I don't think all of that support is astroturfed. I think a lot of those people are probably responding to conditions. What what I find interesting is that they're talking about there's going to be a whole new wave of migrants coming to the United States. You know, on my show, uh, I talked about the sanctuary cities and especially how Chicago sanctuary, um, you know, um, centers are absolute abysmal and have been a failure. Uh, There have been people that was interviewed by Chicago press who were from Venezuela who were saying there's nothing here for us in Chicago. I was better off in Venezuela. And there's a lot of other people who 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 are who are in these sanctuary cities saying like there's no mm-hmm, opportunity mm-hmm. here. I might right. as well just go right back to Venezuela. Right. You might as well just send me right, right back to so I, I find it interesting that they're running with that too, that the press is running with oh, there's gonna be a whole new wave, adding in the fear of here come a whole right. new wave of migrants. Well, maybe there wouldn't be a wave of migrants if the sanctions weren't in, if there wasn't desperation. Well, sure. Because because well, because because sure. when you create an environment of desperation, especially like how the CIA helped create the cartels, when you create these drug lords, these tyrants right. and dictators. Right. You know, a rational person is going to want to leave, but sure. if you keep on doing this, well, then you're wondering why you have the why you have a problem in the first place. So, I, I, I question these protests. I, I want to know how organic some of them are. Maybe some of them are. Maybe some of them aren't. But I, I, I always have to question everything, especially when Trump well, and, and them try, tried to do that fake, uh, what the coup with Maduro, not Maduro, um, what, uh, Gu- Guido with Guido, yeah, Guido, they tried yeah. to install Guido. Yeah, um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at. I have another video of our lovely people in our government. Uh, yeah, in the end, whatever the case is, it's all happening in a context of decades of U.S. attempts to overthrow the government 
through economic warfare and uh, through black op operations. So uh, we're going to take a look. I cut together a video of Anthony Blinken's commentary. Chris Murphy openly talking about how we tried to have a coup in Venezuela. I mean, it's not <laughs> it's not really much of a secret. Um, we're going to we're going to take a look at the candidate who just lost uh, promising to move the embassy to Jerusalem if she won. Oh, yeah, that's going to go swimmingly well. <laughs> and uh, and we have uh, Maduro's statement. So we'll just uh, we'll just play that through. Maybe stop a little as we go. Um, if uh, my colleagues will indulge me for just one minute, I want to speak quickly to the elections that just took place in Venezuela. We applaud the Venezuelan people for their participation in the July 28th presidential election. We commend their courage and commitment to democracy in the face of repression and in the face of adversity. We've seen the announcement just a short while ago by the Venezuelan Electoral Commission. We have serious concerns that the result announced does not reflect the will or the votes of the Venezuelan people. It's critical that every vote be counted fairly and transparently. <laughs> that what a scumbag. What a scumbag. With the opposition and independent observers without delay, and that the electoral authorities publish the detailed tabulation of votes. The international community is watching this very closely and will respond accordingly. Yeah, okay. Now, well, like, you know, I feel like it's Groundhog Day in this. Uh, okay, so, so here's a word of uh, truth. How do you even get up there and talk about their vote when, when it's it's not a, it's not even an open secret. It's just open that we tried to have a coup there in yeah. 2019. It's not cool. even something we hide. All right. So uh, here's a little testimony from Chris uh, Murphy, I believe. Committee, we've been told by the administration, frankly, multiple administrations for years, that Russia's support for Assad and Iran's support support for Assad is tepid. It's fragile. It's just a matter of time before he falls. The truth of the matter is they were always willing to do more than we were in Syria to protect their interests. And that is likely the exact same case here in Venezuela. And so our policy has been um, misguided by fundamentally flawed assumptions from the beginning. Um, and I have deep respect for both of you uh, who are testifying before this committee. Um, but we just have to be clear that our Venezuela policy over the last year and a half has been an unmitigated disaster. And <laughs> if we aren't honest about that, then we can't self-correct. Um, we have to admit that our big play, recognizing Guaido right out of the gate and then moving quickly to implement sanctions, just didn't work. It didn't. All it did was harden Russia and Cuba's play in Venezuela and allow Maduro to paint Guaido as an American patsy. And a lot of us warned that this might happen. Um, we could have used the prospect of U.S. recognition or sanctions as leverage. We could have spent more time trying to get European allies and other partners on the same page. We could have spent more time trying to talk to or neutralize China and Russia early before we backed them into a corner, a corner from which they are not moving. They are not moving. But all we did was play all our cards on day one, and it didn't work. And it's just been an embarrassing mistake after mistake since. First, we thought that getting Guaido to declare himself president would be enough to topple the regime. <laughs> then we thought putting aid on the border would be enough. Then we tried to sort of construct a kind of coup in April of last year, and it blew up in our face when all the generals that were supposed to break with Maduro decided to stick with him in the end. We undermined Norway's talks last summer, and then this March we released a transition framework that, frankly, is almost a carbon copy of the very one that was in front of the parties last year. Uh, Maria Corina. Okay, okay so I, that, I, well, that, I, I got something that, to say. That, I got something that's to say like, here. That that is, that is like somebody snuck a hidden recording into an Illuminati meeting, mm -hmm. and, oh. and you got to hear what they how they talk about these things among themselves. It's amazing that ah. he said that in an open forum. Yeah, no, no, no. What well, better yet? Somebody should have grabbed him and say, "Why did you say the truth in front of the American people? What's wrong with you, Bobby? That's not his name, but Bob." <laughs> Bob, why'd you give away the secret sauce? He's like, you guys, our coups aren't working. We dropped the bag, we crapped in the bed, and now it's one big mess. We should have done this, but instead we did all of this, and it's an absolute. So that means anytime 
independent media ever said, hey, there's a coup happening in Venezuela and a channel will get striked or a video will be taken down. Turns out we were telling the truth because it came out of a authoritative source's mouth. They told the truth. Americans, that's what it looks like when the truth is told in a system that's built in lies. Guys, our, well, uh, our tricks aren't working. Well, yeah, that happens every now and then because clearly this is how they speak amongst themselves about mm -hmm. their activities. And every now and then they forget to turn it off in front of the cameras. Mm -hmm. And that's when you really see how they think about the world. Like, that's a really remarkable piece of footage <laughs> just yeah and we tried to have a coup and it blew up in our face just yeah. he's just rattling off and, all this all these and, deep state shenanigans and we tried to bully russia and china and cuba and, and they're not backing work. down it's like Amazing. guys we well, gotta go that, back to the drawing board well and that's where in the end when you look at this anything that the u.s anything that the EU, anything that Western media is saying about this, you can't really take it seriously. They've been blatantly, openly trying to coup this government mm -hmm. for decades. Um, all right, so let so let's see who he beat. What Venezuela missed out on okay. by not electing the opposition. Chado, gracias. Thank you so much for this uh, interview. Thank you, and we'll stay in touch. And I promise we one day we'll have a close relationship between Venezuela and Israel. And I oh, believe, God. and I can announce this, that our government will move our uh, Israeli embassy to Jerusalem. That will be part of our support to the state of Israel. Wow, in God's will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, we will, so we, I, I will follow I orders. That's, that's, that's what it is. She, she, she stood up and said, I will follow the orders and move embassy to Jerusalem and then just goose step up out of there. Dang. Uh, that, yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. You know, they just they want to replace him with a puppet, obviously, obviously. <laughs> um, all right. So this is uh, this is Maduro responding to all of this. Mundial ha montado un golpe de Estado contra Venezuela. Pretende reeditar el 11 de abril. Pretende reeditar las guarimbas del 14, del 17. El plan original es utilizar el proceso electoral para organizar nuevamente una fuerza y venir con la violencia y su objetivo que es un derrocamiento violento de la revolución bolivariana y la instauración de un gobierno fascista en Venezuela. ¿Cómo se llama esto? Esto es la orden que dieron ayer. Gritar fraude y dar la orden de violencia general. Yo llamo que nadie se deje manipular. Y aquellos que se involucren en hechos guarimberos y violentos se verán la cara con la ley. ¿Qué tiene esta gente en la cabeza? ¿Qué tiene el corazón? ¿Esta gente está preparada para gobernar Venezuela? ¿Esta gente está preparada para asumir las riendas de Venezuela? Si llegaran a tener el poder político en Venezuela, ¿qué serían capaces de hacer con el pueblo? ¿Cómo se llama esto, señores? Lo que yo digo, el racismo... El racismo, el racismo que es la base del fascismo, han inculcado en la mente de esta gente el fascismo. Y el fascismo es violencia, venganza, racismo, desprecio por los valores nacionales. Aquí me dice que hay este grupo, aquí está involucrado para ser investigado un grupo llamado Mis Convive, un grupo delincuencial creado por Voluntad Popular y Leopoldo López. Estamos frente a una organización delictiva. Narcotráfico colombiano metió mucha plata con droga para activar estos grupos delincuenciales. Y yo llamo al pueblo a estar alerta, mil ojos, mil oídos. Y a buscar el mecanismo para que nos llegue la denuncia para actuar preventivamente frente a estos comanditos violentos. All right. Well, so, uh, well, you know, one thing uh, that Anya Powerpill in her book, Corporate Coup, mentions right at the beginning of the book, it was really striking. When you walk into uh, the Venezuelan, I can't remember which government offices it is, whether it's the presidential offices or not, they have a sculpture of Allende's shattered eyeglasses. 
in the lobby as a constant reminder of the activities of the CIA and the State Department in that part of the world. Um, so in the end, even, I, you know, I'm sure some of this unrest is organic and not funded or fake, but why do you have that unrest? They've been sanctioned for 20 years. They've been sanctioned for 20 years. Like, what is it our business, what kind of government they want to have? It's not mm -hmm. even the Cold War anymore. Like, you don't even have this domino theory. Oh, well, if they have it there, like, leave them, leave these well, people alone. Let the them run their country the way the they want. The reason why the sanctions are probably still around is because, you know, when the Soviets were gone, that was our, our check. That was somebody who would keep us in line, I guess, in theory, if you want to call it like that. And so what you now had uh, was the biggest kid in the schoolyard. And, you know, they could bully whoever they want now or push around whoever they want or be friends with anyone, whoever they want. And so if Venezuela said something or did something wrong on the global playground, well, then the U.S. way was like, guess what? You can't step onto the playground anymore. You can't go to the water fountain anymore until you do what I want you to do. And there's been no one really the challenge, you know, especially at the height of after the Cold War, when the U.S. was the only global power wow. in the world. And like uh, like all empires, I don't know if you've ever seen the series Fall of Civilization podcast, you know, it talks about empires. Uh, yeah, I've seen some of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's there, there was a scene, uh, now I forget which documentary it was, but it talked about the rise of empires, and it's a violent phenomenon. It, it, it annexes and starts getting control of its sure. neighbors, controlling influence, and after a while, it starts collapsing under its own weight. And it really isn't our business as a constitutional republic, in theory, if we are one, to uh, get involved with another nation's right. electoral progress. If this, if if the people chose uh, Maduro, fine. If they were going to vote for Guaido, fine. Or whoever this other lady is, fine. That's, that's up to the people. Because I right. know a lot of citizens wouldn't like it if our government was controlled by, oh, wait, we are controlled and no one's uh, saying anything. There, right. There's that. There is yeah, that. that. There is that. Yeah, there's that. Oh, wait. Um, so, so I guess uh, congratulations is in order for Nicolas Maduro. And uh, hopefully he can fend off the Colombian gangs, the CIA, whatever else they throw towards him. Uh, if there's a bright spot for that troubled nation, it's that BRICS is increasingly arising to provide a counterbalance to U.S. interference in that part of the world. And uh, maybe they can help them to economically balance a bit against the effects of the sanctions. Please clap.